With over 1,500 videos on my channel, I was actually pretty surprised that I hadn't made a video yet on this topic. Seriously, if you just watched a few of my videos, you've probably seen me talk up the sports jacket, how this one item can make you look taller, stronger, more masculine, more manly. So, without further ado, the ultimate guide to buying the perfect sports jacket. So, to start things off, I should probably be wearing a sports jacket, right? Let's make it happen. And boom, just like that, you look taller, leaner, more masculine, right? You see the difference? Obviously, I'm standing on something, but the point is valid. Whenever you wear a jacket, it builds up the shoulders, not only in the lines, but in the appearance of the size of the shoulders. When your shoulders look a little bit higher, when they're more pronounced, people will actually assume your height is a bit higher than what it is. Now, specifically, why does a jacket make you look slim? First up, yes, the height has to do with that, but also the shoulder points going in this right here, the lapels, the gorge, that shape right there is something that's going to make you look slimmer. It's going to create this V shape in the front. Another interesting thing about jackets is how they can make your hands look larger. Large hands are actually viewed as attractive. This goes back to primate days. Basically, large hands meant that you were going to be able to hold on to something, so it was viewed as attractive. But when you wear a jacket, guess what? It slims up the arm and it draws attention to the hands. Now, all this design to make a man look more pronounced, to build up the chest, this isn't by accident. If you know the history on the jacket, they come out of military uniforms. In fact, Marine Corps uniforms, we used to have leather right around here. We were called leathernecks because it protected the neck. Point being is the history on the sports jacket is there to make a man look better. So, that's why you want to wear it. Okay, so we've established that sports jackets are going to make you look better, but what's the difference between a suit and a blazer and a sports jacket. Really quick, a suit is any jacket and trousers made from the same fabric. But let's go over and let's look at the blazer. The blazer, very similar to the sports jacket, except normally it's going to be made in a navy material, worsted wool. You're also going to see regatta blazers that come, but blazers in general, they've got this nautical feel, which we often see with the type of button. So, you're going to see silver, you're going to see gold, you're going to see these type of buttons, but blazers in general are going to be more confined. I love sports jackets because sports jackets in the last hundred years, basically what we happen are orphaned jackets. It's a jacket created by itself. It does not have a pair of matching trousers like a suit does. So, does that basically mean a sports jacket is a suit jacket without the matching trousers? Sort of. Sports jackets in general are going to be more casual. So, you're going to see them made from a wider range of different fabrics. You're also going to see a lot of styles that are very particular to sports jacket because those styles are going to be very casual. But what I love about sports jackets over suits or blazers is that they are more casual and in my opinion, more versatile. You can find so many different situations in which you can pull off a sports jacket. Am I going to recommend breaking up a suit and actually just wearing it as a sports jacket? If that's your only suit, I would say no because you want those that jacket and trousers to always match. And if you damage the jacket when you're wearing it, let's say with a pair of jeans, uh, you know, you kind of lost your suit. But if you've got one, more than a few suits and you know, you get those trousers ruined, I would say that you could take possibly one of those jackets and wear it as a sports jacket. Now, at this point, I'm talking about the function of the sports jacket. And this is one of the key points to this video is you first have to ask, am I going to be able to wear this in my day to day? So many of you guys now are on Zoom meetings. You know what? Everyone's saying they got their Zoom shirt. How about you have your Zoom jacket? As you throw on that jacket with a shirt, you look amazing. What I love, sports jackets work with a wide variety of shirts. You could actually be that whole Silicon CEO and simply wear a t-shirt, throw a sports jacket on top and you look better than that guy showing up with that nice, crisp dress shirt because guess what? You got a jacket. The jacket always trumps the shirt. And yes, you can wear a polo shirt with a sports jacket. I think it looks great. But in general, you want to start gearing more towards dress shirts, button downs. And there are just so many different shirts that you can bring in. But because in general, these jackets are casual, you can pretty much wear them with any type of shirt. You can dress them up, you can dress them down. So, why is it when a man wears even a casual sports jacket like this color brown right here that he still commands respect when he walks into a restaurant and they call him sir? When Whenever he's at work and somebody's new there and they're looking for the guy in charge, oh, that guy looks like he's in charge. I'm going to go talk to him and ask him what I should be doing. Not always a bad thing. We assume success has a uniform as well. That uniform for most men is going to be a sports jacket, is going to be a suit jacket. So, when we see this, we default to, oh, that's the person in charge. No matter what industry you're in, if you're a creative, if you're in IT, why not look like the guy in charge? Because sooner than later, people are either going to promote you or you're going to start getting more responsibility or you're going to go off and start your own company and it's going to be able to, it's going to be easier to get business or to get people to loan you money if you look the part of a success. 
Now, what about fit? Me personally, I like my sports jackets a little bit looser. I want to be able to have a little bit more freedom of movement on my suits. They're going to fit a little bit closer to the body, but sports jackets, I expect to wear them not only in the summer, but in the winter when I'm going to be layering them with additional pieces. As you can see here, I slipped on a sweater underneath. Now, specifically, a good fit starts with the shoulders. If it doesn't fit you in the shoulders, gents, do not buy it. Similar to a suit, the jacket needs to fit just like this right here in the shoulders. If it's too large or if it's way Way too tight. You do not want to have to try to adjust the shoulders. If it doesn't fit you in the shoulders, do not buy it. Next up, let's look at jacket length. If a jacket is way too long or if it's way too short, again, very difficult to adjust this. Yeah, you don't want to mess with this if the jacket doesn't just barely cover your buttocks. If you're a little bit taller, you can go a little bit longer. If you're a little bit shorter, you're five foot two, you can go for a jacket that's shorter. Now let's pay attention to arm pitch. This is something a lot of people look over. The pitch is the way that the arm is attached to the torso part of the jacket and it may have to be adjusted. This is a very expensive fix. So if it's really bad, do not buy the jacket. Now let's talk about things that you can adjust. The chest, first up, you can bring a jacket in usually about an inch and a half to sometimes up to two inches if it's a bigger jacket. Smaller jackets, more like an inch and a half to an inch and a quarter. And you could also let it out about an inch. Now, what about the stomach area? This you can bring in easily about an inch and a half to two inches. Again, uh, sometimes I've seen two and a half inches on bigger jackets. You can also let it out again about an inch to an inch and a half depending on the jacket manufacturer. But in general, buy the right size. You don't want want to make huge adjustments because once you start to go past two inches, all of a sudden the proportions, the placement of the pockets, it just doesn't look right. Now, what about sleeve length? A very easy adjustment, assuming that you don't have working surgeon cuffs. If you have that on the jacket, you may only be able to adjust it about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. But if it doesn't have working cuffs, you can easily lengthen or shorten the sleeves, usually by about an inch and a half. Past that, all of a sudden, the proportions start going off. Now, whenever you adjust your jacket sleeves, you want to be wearing a dress shirt because what you're going to do is you're going to put your hands down. Now, that dress shirt, the basically the cuff part, should go to the top of your hand. And you want to be showing about three quarters of an inch. Point being is that jacket sleeve is going to go to about the wrist bone and you want to make sure that the sleeves of the shirt just go a, protrude a bit more than that. And if you're going with a custom sports jacket or a designer sports jacket, look for a jacket with a higher armhole, especially if you're a thinner guy. If you're a fit guy, if you're a bigger guy, it may not work for you, but in general, higher armholes, they are actually more comfortable. They usually give you more freedom of movement because you don't have all this excess fabric in and around the sleeve. So you're going to get a more tapered sleeve and this looks better on slim guys. And again, if you want something that you basically can move around in, higher armholes are key. Now, gents, we're talking about fabric and build quality. And let's look at this jacket I'm wearing right here. Notice the pattern. Of course, everyone's going to notice the pattern. This is a window pane. This is a jacket that I probably couldn't wear two days in a row. It's not going to be super interchangeable, but it is going to be one that, hey, if I've already got five to six sports jackets, I want to bring something with a fun pattern. Larger patterns are going to be much more casual and, in my opinion, aren't where you want to start your sports jacket wardrobe with because they're not really interchangeable. So where to start? Guys, it's simple. Go with solids. Solids are going to be easy to match. They're going to be easy to bring into your existing wardrobe and there are tons of options out there. Now, you may be confused, okay, what's the difference between a navy blazer and a navy sports jacket? Honestly, not much. Maybe the buttons, but in general, they're pretty much going to be the same jacket. I would say that going with a solid navy is a good option. It's going to match pretty much anything, any type of trousers you've got in your wardrobe, but you could go with more of a bluer variations of blue, more true blue. You could even bring in a gray you could bring in a green, but again, just solids. They're so versatile. They're going to work with so many options and they're just a great foundation to have for your first few sports jackets. Now, does that mean that every solid is going to be a great choice? Not necessarily, as I probably wouldn't go with this as one of your first sport jackets. It's a beautiful color. I actually kind of like this combination. But in general, when it comes to sports jackets, you want to stick with the colors that are more traditional, things that you're already wearing in your wardrobe. Now, does that mean that you should avoid patterns for your first few sports jackets? The answer is no. If you know what you're doing and you bring in a pattern that's very muted, you can actually pull it off easily and it can be interchangeable. Just look at this jacket right here. When you get up close, you see the patterns. You see the blue, you see the white, you see see the black, all that speckled right there in the tweed, but from a distance, it looks like a light gray solid. And that's what I love about this jacket. Now, this jacket, very similar as you can see, get up close, you look at those patterns, you see that they're a bit more pronounced than we saw on the Harris tweed, but 
from a distance. This looks like a light blue. And yes, it's a bit more, not as interchangeable, but still, if you only own four to five sports jackets, I would definitely have this in the mix. And sometimes it's going to be all about the weave, all about the pattern that's created with actually not much contrast in the fabric. When you get up close, what do you notice about this jacket? That herringbone pattern, very distinct. And you'll see this in a lot of different sports jackets out there. Now, what about fabric materials? So, I'm going to start this one off with the one that probably gets the least attention, and that is performance fabrics. And I do think in the last decade, I've seen a lot of improvements in performance fabrics. For me, it was always about, you know, some of them can look and feel really good, but the issue is it's the style of the jackets. There are some manufacturers out there you just need to know what you're looking for that are starting to come out with some nice style jackets. This one right here is a good travel jacket, relatively lightweight, breathable. It's overall a well-made jacket. And that's what you want to look for. A performance jacket that's made in the color you want. And the best jacket, the best sports jacket you're going own is the one that you wear. And that's what I like about these because they're made from materials that, yeah, just may make it easier if you're in a really hot environment. Next up, let's talk about worsted wool. This is the same material that you see in most suits. Worsted wool is going to be a very tightly woven wool that gives a little bit of a sheen overall, just a very luxurious feel. Wool though is a luxury fabric. It's going to be expensive and that's what's going to drive up the cost. These are oftentimes going to be a hundred percent wool. That is a good indicator. You usually don't want to go for blends because it just means that they probably skipped in other areas. Now, there are many wool jackets out there without that tight worsted finish, so they're not going to have a sheen to them. This wool jacket actually has more like a flannel, a napped surface to it. I like it. It's great for the fall, great winter, maybe even spring. You could almost never go wrong with wool. Another sports jacket material you're going to see a lot, linen. Linen is great because it's durable, it's breathable. This is going to be a staple for the summer, especially if you want to continue to wear sports jackets. Look for jackets that are going to be unlined. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But uh, general, linen is great, except for the fact that you have to iron it. You have to get it pressed because linen is going to wrinkle. Just understand that's part of the nature of the beast. It just comes along with it. But uh, if you can get past that, linen is amazing. Now, gents, I know you've got an opinion. I want to hear from you down in the comments. Do you wear a sports jacket? Yes or no? Let me know. And if you answer no, I would love to hear why you don't wear it. And if you answer yes, why do you wear it? Because guys, I'm on a mission to get more men to wear sports jackets. I think they just look great. I should start my own sports jacket company, right? <laughs> Someday. Now, what about the style details? Well, first up, let's talk about lapels. In general, notch lapels are where it's at. You may want to go for a sport lapel, especially if you're getting something custom, or if you see a jacket out there and a sport lapel just in general is going to be one that looks like can latch clothes. What you want to avoid are shawl lapels. Shawl lapels are fine for black tie, but they're yeah not really great for sports jackets. They're just too formal. The same with peak lapels. I do think maybe on a solid gray sports jacket or a solid blue sports jacket, I've seen some guys pull off the, the peak lapel thing, but in general, I would reserve that for suits. Now, with pockets, this is where you get to have a lot more fun. Jetted pockets, you're going to see it on black tie. Flat pockets, you're going to see it on suits and a lot of sports jackets. But you're also going to see patch pockets. Patch pockets don't work for suits because they make them too casual. Those are pockets sewn right onto the canvas. It just makes the jacket more fun. And you want to look for things like that, especially if you can find one on the breast pocket. Now, when it comes to vents, most jackets are going to be single vent just simply because it's inexpensive to manufacture, but I don't think it's the best option. If you can find a jacket that has double vents, that's where it's at. And it also fits with the whole sports, you know, background with the jacket. Now, if you go with a jacket with no vent, that's an Italian thing, but you'll probably have to get the sports jacket custom made because it's very rare to see that. Now, what about surgeon cuffs? This is basically where the buttoning right here works. The history on this is surgeons on the battlefield, they wanted to be able to roll up their sleeves, hence they wanted this to be working. But nowadays, it's just for decoration. Most off the rack sports jackets aren't going to actually have them working and for good reason because it'll allows you to basically adjust the sleeve more. So, if you didn't have working button cuffs, you can simply take these off. You can move it up two inches or extend it an inch and then just simply put the buttons back. The problem with the working cuffs and why it's actually a premium thing is because it's just going to work for less body types. Uh, it shows that the jacket was probably made custom for the individual, although that's not always the case. And if it is something you want to adjust, understand that you can only adjust this by about half an inch to three quarters of an inch 
uh, with the amount of room that you're left there. Now, what about the inside of the jacket? So, you're going to see a few variations out there. You're going to see lined jackets, you're going to see partially lined jackets, and you're going to see unlined jackets. Now, unlined jackets, they do have a bit of lining because you need to have that to basically the, the chest piece and the shoulders need to be protected. Uh, I also like it in the arm so you can get your arms in and out of the jacket easily, but believe it or not, unlined jackets and partially lined jackets are more expensive than fully lined jackets or at least they cost more to manufacture. The reason being is a fully lined jacket allows you to cover up a lot of ugly things on the inside of the jacket. So, you can put that lining in there and by the way, you're looking usually for Bemberg. That's going to be one of the best materials. It comes from a wood pulp. It's going to be breathable. You want to avoid silk. Even though silk sounds nice, the problem with silk, if it starts to tear, very difficult to replace or to fix. Fully lined jackets are great, but I love partially lined jackets or unlined jackets for the summer, especially if you're looking at a linen jacket. You want something that's going to be breathable. Unlined jackets are going to be where it's at, but understand that they're going to usually cost more because they have to make everything look really nice. They got to build the jacket in a way that it not only looks good on the outside of the jacket, but it also looks good on the inside of the jacket. So, what video to watch next? Well, guys, you got to wear pants with your sports jackets, right? Well, most of the time. Point being is you want to check out this video. I talk about 15 different styles of trousers that every man should consider buying.